we go about here in India, how do we go about developing this technology and eventually thinking about commercialization. You can do the research, you can come up with new ideas, but if you are not, if you do not have entrepreneurship mind, then it is very difficult to commercialize it. So we need to think in that direction. Okay, so if you see here that, you know, in, in the area of food and nutrition that many of you know about canola oil, you know, that the canola oil is a kind of a mustard oil, you know, the sarson cartel, you guys remember that. And uh, there was a technology developed by this NSSL, nano size self assembly structure liquid, and it uses this nanotechnology uses nano drops here. And, and what it does is allows penetration of healthy component such as vitamins, uh, such as minerals, many kind of phytochemicals um, which are insoluble in water are, are also in the, in the lipid. And, and essentially, you know, this technology being used to um, make sure that, you know, that uh, your uh, cholesterol, the bad cholesterol is not going to go into the bloody stream. Nano T, again, nanotechnology being used, and the nano T can release effectively all the excellent essence of T, thus boosting the absorption, adsorption. In food and nutrition, vitamin supplement here. This is newly designed pre-metered non-aerosol uh, um, nanoceutical delivery system here. In short, we call them S NDS. This is uh, administered uh, transmucosally, resulting in higher circulatory and tissue level. To introduce nano droplets of pure nutrients into the body. Um, you know, it's better than your uh, capsule or any other means we take any, any kind of nutrients. Many area in, in, uh, in the areas of household product, nano oil lubrication, nano again, nano technology being used here. You know, what it does is unlocks frozen parts dissolve rust and corrosion, drives uh, out moisture, there is no squeak. In bath towel, in this case you know that uh, it is made up from 100 percent pure co cotton treated with the silver sure. So silver being kind of uh, added on top of that. and. Uh, and essentially it helps with the different kind of fungal infection. Um, you know that uh, uh, many times when you go to the public shower or you go to the gym that is being used by many, many people and, and there is a contamination problem there. So you know the people use the towel, they provide it. And the towel coating up, uh, coating up the uh, silver. Luggage, to keep luggage looking newer and cleaner for longer periods. You know that uh, when we come from uh, United States to, to India that you know that uh, we buy brand new luggage and, and within a couple of trips that you know it becomes really, looks really bad. Okay, so here is this technology being used to keep them for a longer time here. Um, it's create lightweight, as you, as you guys know that, you know, whenever you travel, um, that, you know, that the airlines are asking that, you know, your luggage should not be more than this or that. And, and if your luggage is very heavy weight, then you are taking the content you are take, taking inside the luggage is going to be reduced here. So if they are using this technology, nanotechnology to create lightweight fabric that provides superior protection against stain and other elements here. Okay, and, and uh, it is uh, being used by Nanotex 
fabric they have developed. Um, wrinkle free sheets here, egg active sheets uh, sets, fight against the cast infection of superbugs such as penicillin, you know that you guys know about that in our MRSA that um, uh, you know that uh, we all are scared of this, this kind of infection here. So, so you know using sheet you know helps us a lot. Plastic wrap, producing nano zinc oxide light catalyst, it sterilizes completely indoor lighting using the indoor lighting here. And, and you know it, it can um, function of the nano plastic wrap is anti UV, reflecting IR, sterilizing and anti mold. So you are talking about these plastic wrap which we use to cover the the food um, for some time or also we cover it to put in the in the refrigerator. So, so this is this is again being used nanotechnology being used to develop this here. Socks here you know that you guys may know about that uh, um, athlete's food uh, you know that it is being developed by certain uh, fungus okay. So in this case you know that uh, cotton socks treated with the nano silver particle and the nano silver inhibits the growth of bacterial and fungus thus preventing food odor and itchiness making sure that there is you no know, contamination there. The pants, the dockers, docker is a big company you know that uh, make these pants here that dollop and they call it go khakis that is what they call it promise to keep the leg is stain free using revolutionary nanotechnology. Um, these days you know that many of these um, pants coming out you know that uh, they are is, um, uh, iron free you do not need to iron them ok. So again it is a use of your nanotechnology here. Washing machine. Um, one of the company, the key company makes the uh, washing machine is Samsung uses this technology uh, call it silver nano. And what they do is that uh, uh, the drums which rotate the cloth within that uh, machine you know that has silver and, and it also sterilizes your cloth as it gets washed uh, inside here ok. Plus you also you are able to save the 30 percent water. Again it is uh, all about nanotechnology. Refrigerator one of the company they would you know they have developed the side, a side by side refrigerator and they use silver for superior um, coating inside ok that restrain the growth and increase of a wide variety of bacteria and, and eliminate odor. So you know that your food contamination or food becomes less um, contaminated and, and you can uh, leave the food for a longer time. Um, you see in the appliances uh, window air conditioner and again Samsung, Samsung is using this technology here in nano, uh, nanotechnology air conditioner has silver nanotechnology making sure that you know that uh, the air coming inside you know it goes through a filter that has uh, uh, decontaminate the air you know not sending all these kind of germs coming out from there. Toothpaste, toothpaste we all are using um, you know the nanotechnology to develop the toothpaste here um, you know that uh, it is same you know they use the nanotechnology same substance as the teeth. Removes plaque also provides essential minerals to repair surface and subsurface areas. Same material protecting against any kind of tooth decay and you know your, your, your uh, tooth looks really nice you know that uh, um, a lot of whitening you know that you might have heard about that 
um, uh, in, uh, in TV uh, commercial. Cosmetics, we talked a lot about that. Fullerene, used in cosmetic application. Different kinds, we talked about that earlier. Nano exfoliant, you know that uh, all these kind of scrub, we use it to, to remove the dead properties without causing lasting, lasting redness or damaging the skin, you know that earlier we were using different, uh, rubbing it to remove all these exfoliate and while rubbing it causes redness, allergy and all kind of things, okay, using nanotechnology to remove that kind of thing. In personal care product, razor blades, okay, razor blades here, they call, they call it FX diamond razor. They use the nanotechnology here and, and coating on it blade to make the more durable. Panasonic, you know, they have arc electronic razor. They use this nanoparticles in its blade to increase their sharpness. Because remember that, you know, after some time that, you know, that your blade is not uh, sharp now. Okay? So they are using this nanotechnology here. Mosquito repellent spray. You guys might have heard about that, you know. So often um, you buy all these things uh, to, to spray on yourself to uh, repel uh, mosquitoes here. You spray this product on clothes, the effect will last up to 10 hours for a long, long time here. The skin cream, again superior nano zinc oxide formula that you know we talked earlier um, last week to completely remove the makeup and dead cells. But many of these things I don't ever use it, but I hear you know once I start reading about these things then I see, my God, you know, this technology has basically invaded our life. Everything is there. Tooth or whatever you using it. So, the Korean company using the nanotechnology for soap production, resulting in the preparation of nano solutions here. Antibacterial soaps. Kills a wide variety of pathogenic bacteria and viruses including hepatitis and other infectious diseases. The skin supplement, advanced nanotechnology LLC, that uh, supplements in nano 2 plus, so small that they pass through, pass right through the membrane of human cells, completely nourishing them and bringing them to the life, helping yourselves. Sunscreen, we talked again last week about sunscreen here. You know, natural ingredients, the skin is uh, soothers and clear Zico technology make this a refreshing choice in sun protection. You know, that lightly moisturizing skin with the skin enhancing, you know, all these kind of natural product being added to that, you know, green tea, vitamin C, E, A, all these kinds being added. Curly iron, <laughs> nanotechnology produces minimum hair damage. Many of you might be using that, okay? Leaves hair renewed, repaired, and revitalized for a softer and a smoother finish. Looks everything after use, looks good, I guess. But you know that the, again, the question is, can we use this one for 10 years, 15 years? Does it look the same? We don't know about that. And that's what I want you guys to think about that. In case of electronics, you know, you're talking about intercelleron processor here. Use nanotechnology in 2000. Intel believes that the future of the nanotechnology is silicon-based. That's what they are using. 
iPad Nano, iPad Nanos, 4 uh, GB Nano flash memory. Samsung is using this technology here. Notebook computers use a Samsung Silver Nano technology. Remember that you know notebook here. So you're ta basically talking about you know the people going and using these uh, um, uh, keyboards. You know, so you don't know who used it before you, and when you go it, are you going to transfer those diseases the person had it coming to you? So here the nano technology being used restrict the use of hazardous substance and promote also promotes the power saving. Okay, use the antibacterial properties of silver to protect computers user from potentially harmful germs, molds and bacteria. The person who has used it is that going to come to you protecting yourself. Keyboard and mouse. Okay. That uh, this this uh, iogear uh, wireless keyboard an optical mouse combo is coating with the titanium dioxide and silver nanoparticles compound. Okay, so basically just to deactivate the enzymes and proteins of bacteria from surviving on the surface of the product. People have used before you, if there is anything, deactivate them so it does not get transferred to you or the next person going to be using that. Sensors. We talked about sensors. Apply nanotechnology during sensor development. It produces high density as well as lower power consumption. Lithium ion battery, we talked about that. You know, all these uh, that uh, the hybrid cars are coming up. Or, uh, you know, that. Uh, you know the battery cars are coming up you know that they are using this technology here. So Toshiba latest advances in nanomaterial technology in manufacturing lithium ion battery. Your cell phone has that. Photo, photo paper, Kodak, Ultima picture paper employs engineered with the ceramic nanoparticles and other advances in coating technology which, which help the paper from uh, hu heat, humidity, light and ozone. So the, f uh, the paper can last for a long time. Nanolithography, nano inks has developed a, nano, developed a nanotechnology based approach to fight pharmaceutical counterfeiting and illegal diversions. Many in the area of drugs here, the cancer drugs. A doxil here, anti-cancer drug for the treatment of refractory ovarian cancer and AIDS related sarcoma. Okay, they call it stealth technology, uses lipid nanoparticles. So here lipid, nan uh, the nanotechnology being used. This drug here, that anti-cancer drug used to treat advanced breast cancer. Again, nanotechnology being used here. I mean, we talked a lot about that nanotechnology in area of medicine, if you remember that last week. In, um, in, um, in this one here, anti-nausea anti uh, drug for chemotherapy patients. You know that chemotherapy, that the nausea is the major problem. So using that, you know, this technology to develop an anti-nausea uh, drug for chemotherapy patient formulated as nanocrystal drug particles. Immunosuppressant and hormone therapy. Rapamune here, the immunosuppressant for organ rejection in patients age 13 years or older receiving renal transplant. In this one, estrazorb here, topical lotion, and using your, your hormone here, estrogen, for the treatment of moderate to severe heart flashes. Of 
cholesterol and appetite treatment, tricolor here. Cholesterol lowering drug that employs nanocrystal technology. In this case, the drug designed to stimulate appetite for the treatment of anorex anorexia. Again here, nanocrystal technology being used. Bone replacement and, uh, and dental reconstruction. If you see the vitos, uh, vitos that use in repairing bone defects that are comprised of highly porous, about 100 nanometer in size particles, and the nano size particles to enhance resorption and new bone growth. Zirconium, nano size zirconium oxide for dental application, including filling and prosthetic devices. Again, nanotechnology. In, in medical imaging, they are using nanocrystals here. Nanometer scale atom uh, clusters have been coated with the additional semiconductor, which is zinc sulfide, to improve the optical properties of the material. In diagnostic, magnetic nanoparticles called ter terofluid conjugated to antibodies and directed against rare cell including circulating tumor and endothelial cells. Another one in medical tools, you know the surgeons are using this laparoscopic fusion system here. You know they call it um, Surge RX in seal tissue sealing and Hemostasis system allows surgeon to seal and transect small to large vessels, large pedicels and tissue bundle to achieve surgeon homostasis. A lot of medical names here. Thymus. Thymus is it's a, a cutting edge technology, nanotechnology used to develop thymus with uh, with its ideal surgical mess properties, including biocompatibility, resistant to infection, and the ability to be recognized by the body as a sodium titanium implant. Think about that, you know, that you go to the doctor's office, you don't know that, you know, that what they are using. Many of those have um, um, nanotechnology. Anti-coat, anti-coat, they are using a nanocrystal here, dressing up for powerful antimicrobial barrier protection. Silva, Silva guard technology, Silva guard antimicrobial anti surface treatment is nanoparticle technology created and applied in a solution here. In reproduction here, that you know that they are using nanotechnology to uh, for the home pregnancy test. So you don't need to go to the doctor; you can do it at home. Liquid condom here. This American scientific research uses nanometer silver and physical foaming for this process. Sporting goods, baseball bat. You know they are using carbon nanotube, carbon nanotube technology being used in that, you know, and carbon nanotube technology 16 times is stronger than the steel. So think about that, pretty strong compared to the steel. Bicycle, this, this company called Eastern Sports, the world's first bicycle featuring nanotechnology product. Carbon nanotubes are tiny cylinder of carbon atoms that have 100 times the strength of steel, but weight is considerably less here. So what you are talking about, that bicycle, which is, sorry, the bicycle, which is 23% lighter than previous lightest model. And you can see weighing 
in just 960 grams, my God, very less than a kilo. Bowling ball, again they are using carbon, nanocarbon in this case. Fishing rod, they are using nano titanium cores. Golf ball, you know they, they, they have a nanotech core they call it, nanoparticles infused in the rubber chemistry to produce an extremely lively but soft inner core. Hockey stick, okay, again using the nanotechnology here, 60 to 70 percent better impact resistant than the traditional composite stick. I don't know how many of you play the hockey, but you know certainly you can try this. Golf club, golf club here, AQ Flex Golf Nano Composite Technology Enhancement increases the surface area of the, uh, of the shaft thereby creating a tighter molecular structure. Again nanotechnology here, automotive, we talked about that. The pen finish here is that you know that you can improve in any kind of scratch resistant when you paint it, you cannot see that. Car wax, that the nano wax is applied using the nanotechnology here. It also provides an amazing shine and leaves no wax residue behind. I mean you can see the picture here, not great picture, but you know looks uh, really great. Fuel additive. In Warox, fuel bond catalyst is a scientifically and commercially proven diesel fuel additive reduces fuel consumption and also reduces harmful exhaust coming out from that. Auto glass treatment here using advanced nanotechnology forming a barrier molecule by uh, molecule that uh, chemically bond to the glass. You know this is this outperforming the leading rain repellent product you know that your uh, a windshield, okay, that sometimes you see when you run that, you know, that uh, you see the scratches, but that's what they are using, you can't see anything. It will just run out. Tire, S-Drive, S-Drive is designed with nanotechnology to provide extraordinary grip and handling. You know that as it rains, that when you drive, that you know it has uh, it uses this technology to to better to attract, um, be in touch with the road. Surface coating, nanoparticles used bears premium plus. You can find it. I mean, you know that I just had my uh, house was painted last year. And I remember seeing this this uh, uh, this pen. They are using nanotechnology. Pen improves adhesion and anti-mildew properties. Often, because of the pen, you will see that you know that uh, uh, bacteria, uh, the um, fungal will grow on top of that. But if you use this one, you can't see it. There is no fungal growth. Also, you allow this user to forgo the normal two-step priming. You can go, you know, you can go one one step and you can paint the whole thing. You don't need to do it twice. Non-stick um, bakeware, you know, you can buy the bakeware um, that you know which uses the nanotechnology here, and and they provide you non-stickiness, uh, long-lasting, contaminant releasing and non-staining. All these, the new cookwares are coming up using nanotechnology. Environmental health and safety, radiation suits, that many, many times, uh, you know, if you are working with the radiation company that you need to go and clean up certain area, then of course, uh, 
you need to wear these radiation suits here. Developed by radiation shield technology, a revolutionary, tightweight, non-toxic, lead-free radiation protection fabric for individuals. This unique garment that can effectively shield the human body against ionizing radiation while leaving its uh, wearer unencumbered and fully mobile. So it's easy to move around, yet you are fully protected. Self-cleaning cleaning, uh, glass here. This, this company has a special transparent exterior coating that lasts the life of the window. Umbrella, again nano, nano nuno umbrella, they call it. Moisture does not penetrate the fabric and so there is no tedious drawing. So it does not penetrate. You go through the class, or go to the office, use this umbrella, the water doesn't go through that, so there is no need to put it outside to dry. So, so there, there are, we talked a lot about that yesterday, you know, I didn't go in all the detail. But then you can see anything you talk about, nanomedicine, our life, our clothes, um, paint, you know, everything is basically using this technology here, okay? So, oh, okay, so my question is, is nanotechnology really affecting us? Um, and I want you guys to think about that. And I put a line there, so you say yes or no, whatever. You think about that. And whatever, whatever you think, you say yes or no, you have a reason for that. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I don't know about the cost because I didn't study the cost yet. But remember that, you know, when the technology, the newer technology you use, the cost is always high. But once they start using it, you start producing in mass scale, the cost is going to be slower um, going down. Uh, most of the Okay, that's what we talked about that, you know, that does it have effect on our health? Do we need to do more study? Or I think we have done all these study and we are sure that whether we are going to use it or not going to use it. I think there is still, you know, that this is a new technology and if you remember that in last 10, 15 years, this, the product started coming up. So did we have enough time to, to find out the exposure? that how much our body needs to be exposed, for how long, one day, two days, 10 days, a year, 10 years. I don't have an answer for that. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys, and maybe then, then after that um, uh, we can, um, we can have a open the floor for discussion here that I also met earlier this week with the several faculty came out from Department of Biotechnology. And, and one thing I found out and for you guys as, in, as a young, um, as you hear about this, um, this technology that there might be several long several ideas might be popping up in your brain that, oh my God, we could do this, we could do that, you know, that uh, if I do it or I have some idea and, and I want to further explore it or maybe develop a company or, or, you know, be more entrepreneurship and, you know, those kind of things because that's when this is the time it will start coming to your mind, okay? So here I put some ideas, some the process that, you know, that uh, what you should be doing. And, and um, I don't know about this place, but I was talking to some of the faculty and I felt that, you know, that uh, um, there is not uh, um, 
in this institution, there is not a setup by which one could be inclined to be entrepreneurship. Have some idea and explore that thing. I, I don't know, but did you guys know about that uh, Bill Gates? Do you know his qualification? He doesn't have the graduate degree. But he is the second richest guy in the world. Second richest guy. He used to be first one for a long time, then this guy uh, Amazon came. Okay. So, so it doesn't have to be that you don't have to have a PhD or you don't have to have a master. You got certain ideas and you test it and it works and you can develop a company, right? Okay, so that's what it is here. So if you have an idea, then think about that. How can I, certain things came to your mind. What can I do to test that idea? Test the idea. If it works, then take it to the, you know, go to the department here I'm talking about. I go out a professor, you know him. Go to him and discuss about that. That this is the idea I have. That in several classes, there might be a project for you guys. Talk to the professor. I said, well, this is the idea I have, and I want to test that, uh, that idea as a part of, the pro uh, part of the project within that course. Or go to your professor. If they are interested, they might give you the lab space help you with that, okay? Once you collect some idea and it is working, then talk to the professor. You speak to and then once you have it, then uh, professor can go and talk to the head of the department or eventually if there is a research office, you go to the research office, talk to them. In, in, in the US, each, each university has a research office. So if I have some idea that you know that uh, uh, something is working, then I will basically go and talk to the research office, you know, the, uh, the vice president research, and say that this is how I see it. If you convince him, then either within the university there is a office, or they have contracted these uh, uh, contracted several agencies outside, and then basically you know that they will get those people. You explain the idea, they will evaluate it, and if there is any relevance, be careful here. If it is going to be licensed, that license will occur, our university will get involved. Make sure that you are getting some percentage out of that. At our place, 40% goes to the person who has developed that, 40% goes to the university, and 20% research office takes it because they are the one arranging all these kind of things. So you get that, you know, you make sure that you get certain percent of that. Okay? So whatever is the royalty coming out from that company, or licensing fee coming out from that company, you get certain percent. Okay? You need to be careful about that. And then, you know, that um, develop a provisional IP, intel intellectual property a patent you call them. That gives you about a year. In the US it gives you about a year. But then by intellectual means that it is in the government system it has been shown that you develop or you apply for the uh, provisional IP on this date. It means that gives you the priority date for you. If anybody else develop after that you are the first one to have that thing. The next company or next person developed after you. Okay? And then in the in the year you got some more time. If you want to develop further, you want to test certain other things about that technology, you can do it. And then if it works, then you'll go for the full fledged IP. Which gives you um, you know I don't know how much it cost here, but it cost about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in the US and the university pays for that because they are getting, remember that, 40 plus 20, 60 percent of the money they are getting. 
so they will contribute for that okay so that's how that you know that I was talking to Dr. Sharma and he told me that you know I need to talk to you guys about that because that's where the most of the uh, you have fresh mind and uh, most of the technology as you hear uh, might come out um, uh, and, and, and these are the processes here. Any question from here? Okay, we'll come back here. Another thing, he, he wanted me to talk to you guys about some of you and maybe one or two people came and talked to me earlier that you know that if you are admission um, if you are in if you want to um, go for higher studies in US certainly you can go as undergraduate which is BS degree for four years but the problem is all those expenses you have to bond from your own pocket which is very expensive at my place uh, the place where I work uh, the tuition is $25,000 per year, so $100,000 for four years, plus your living expense about $15,000, $20,000, okay, so it is expensive. Whereas if you decide to go for the graduate student, graduate means um, master and PhD, then very likely you will get uh, some sort of a stipend. Okay, um, and many people go as a stipend. That's how I went. I went as a graduate student because there is a support from the department. You do certain jobs within the university. They will give you some money. Often, if you get the stipend, your tuition is free now. They will take care of the tuition. Okay, so here is before you think about that. You need to really work hard, you know, try to have a high GPA. That is the key thing. GPA with the C is not going to help you. Mostly A, in some cases if you have one or, one or two Bs, that is fine, okay? Because you are going to be, um, uh, you know, applying where many students will apply, some will have high GPA and, and so you know basically each department has certain number and you know so you need to float up on the top, okay. You start a process if you want to go for the master degree or PhD degree, you start thinking about oh maybe a couple of years in advance because you submit your application and then it takes about, takes about 9 to 12 months before you hear anything. So you start thinking about that. In order to do that, you need to take several exams, okay? Several exams means you need to do a GRE, which is the graduate record, record examination. You can Google search it. There are two types. One is uh, general exam, another one is subject exam. So if you want to go in biology, there is subject exam means the question about the biology. The graduate is mostly your uh, um, general aptitude test kind of thing, okay? You need to get a good score because yeah, you know that everybody applies, they have a high uh, GPA, but you know that uh, GRE also play a role that you know whether you can get the assistantship or not. Because number of, number of these assistantship are is smaller, okay. Then there is a, there is a uh, test for English, uh, test for the English, test of English here. And it used to be called TOEFL and they changed few years back and I'm not sure, do you know what is the name? TOEFL, yeah, it used to be called TOEFL, but now they changed the name. It's basically English test. Uh, huh? IELTS, yes, yes, they changed the new name, but it is same thing basically. Okay, so. Uh,
Oh, both are different. Okay, but is that not the as long as you have one uh, that you are exactly you are acceptable? Yes, and there are certain score you need to get in in that because they want to make sure that yes you can communicate to them. Uh, sometime uh, uh, they will give you a stipend, and that is stipend might be you need to go and teach a freshman biology lab if you are applying in biology. Okay. Um, as a as a they call it graduate teaching assistant or graduate research assistant. Um, so you know they will give you certain jobs. So they want to make sure that you can communicate to the student whatever they say. You can understand it. You can communicate to them, um, and also you know that have um, comprehension to understand the lecture and do well in the in in the classes you are taking. Okay, so you need GRE, you need uh, Engl uh, TOEFL or English test. Uh, the score got to be good because they are going to, if, if you are an American, the GRE is required for all these graduate students. But they will not take the test for English because they are born and brought up and that's what they do. So there is no English test for those guys. You also need um, a statement letter. If you remember that, you know, the, the graduate degree in America is um, it's a research oriented. So if you are interested in certain research, then you need to write that, you know, if you are interested in cancer biology, why you are interested in cancer biology? Okay? Um, you know, those kind of things. Uh, so it's a general statement you write about that and the committee will read the general statement and they will say that you know this person I mean yesterday I received an email um, from a graduate coordinator and it says that oh here is the uh, application for this guy and interested in this program um, and one of the faculty has written no I don't like him because what area he says that he wants to do research, that area do we do not have it. So remember that, you know, so before you write the statement, you need to make sure you go to the website of that department, find out what are the areas they can cover. Okay? So if you find out and then you write according to that area, then the chances are higher. Otherwise, if I write something and that discipline is not there, then of course, they will say that now this guy we don't offer that program so we cannot accommodate him that person is out okay so write a statement and you know writing that statement takes some time to write it take it to an English professor make sure that you know the the grammar wise uh, it is good it makes sense right um, take it to your professor they will help you Yeah. They will give you some instruction that you know that uh, that what they want to see in there, but generally who you are, why you are interested in this university, why you are interested in biological sciences, why you are interested in cancer biology, these kind of things. Okay. You also need a recommendation letter. Recommendation letter is key thing over there. Okay. So you know that ask a professor or ask someone with whom you have worked who can write about you about you. Do not ask someone that doesn't know about you and write a generic letter. Yeah, he's a great guy, you know, it's, uh, I see him every day walking outside and he say hello and I say hello. You know, those, those letters are no good. Okay, somebody can write about that, you know, that what you have done, if you have taken a class, you took a, 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 a lab course and, you know, that was 
you were doing uncertain things and you know he can say that uh, this guy was uh, really interested in this aspect and you know he was the class was given to do these things but he took it further ahead and he wanted to do these kind of things you know so the, you know showing interest that this guy is really serious about the the research you know the um, those kind of things okay uh -huh. No, no. Depending on two to three, two to three. Okay, and the person whoever writes it, the person will say that I know this guy for last three four years because I was his instructor in this course. He did a research project under this class with me. And, you know, a person say that how, uh, what was the way they interacted with you, or you interacted with them. Guide, or it could be your professor that you are, um, you know, may not be a uh, um, research professor, but you uh, took a course and helped you in several ways. Okay? And that, you know, that reference letter that you don't have to put that thing in your application. That letter goes separate, and the professor will send it. You know, you don't do it. I mean, although you can take it, you put the stamp and all those kind of things, which is which is okay, but you know, you don't take the letter and you send it. Here is a letter. No. Okay. Um, you start the process. You know, you start thinking about that. Um, you know, that uh, uh, go to the website, go to the school's website, department website. Who is doing what? And then after that, you know, if you feel that you know you are interested in certain professor, you write him a personal email that hey, I have applied and I'm really interested in your research because you are doing these these things, and you know that I'm interested because of these these these. You know, something like a, developing a personal contact, so person will know that you know that you are really interested in the research. When the application comes, then he is going to seriously look about that, or he can say that hey. I'm ready to accept this guy if you meet all these qualifications. Okay? Yeah. Anything else? Did I miss anything? Manish? Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, for RA when that you know that um, when your application remember that application goes to the department then it is got to be evaluated that you meet the requirement for the department okay and then once you are accepted then they will start looking okay so we have accepted this many people do we have funding to support all those okay. So then that time if you have written to professor that I am interested, professor has money and he can say well I can support this person as a RA, RA means research assistantship. So money coming from that um, uh, his or her grant. And huh? For what? So you are going after PhD or during? So so okay. So you are talking about that is called postdoctoral fellow. Okay. So this does not apply to you. Okay. Professor, you know that uh, if you are going for postdoctoral, then you look that you know who has funding, um, and um, write to that person directly. Yeah. Al yeah, although there is for J1, I hear that for Sini Lala, I had to write that, you know, that he came to America and he knows very well English and we have published our paper because the J1 is, it's a new law for the J1. Yeah. So either I have to write or, or somehow he has to prove it. Yeah. Uh, 
Anybody in chemistry? Okay, I, I don't know that because that is not my area, so I cannot tell you. Anybody, any any idea from chemistry can? Yeah, it is replaced. It's called R15 or something. I remember that, you know, because there was something in um, in my refrigerator, and they came up with the can in order to, uh, yeah. So I don't remember the name, but yeah, there, there is some. Yeah, it's a, the, what they do, I remember that the old technology is still, yeah, old technology is still there. Uh, so what they do is very less though. So I remember that whatever amount they remove from the uh, equipment or operators, they need to collect it because you cannot just release anywhere. They will collect it and they have to, I guess, uh, write down uh, and it goes to the government or somewhere. Um, but you know there are there are still old technology and and you know you cannot run them without using CFC. So as long as but you know I remember that um, they have been they have given a certain a time period. Is that okay? Okay. Any other question? It's a, yeah, the, the different universities they have ranking over there. So you know it is up to if you really want to, if you have a strong credential, you want to go to the high ranking, certainly you should. But remember that each application also costs some money, I believe, right? There is some application fee for that. So think about that, how much, whether you can afford it or not. And, and um, I don't know, I mean, I, it's a difficult for to tell me that how many you should but it got to be, I don't know, 10, 15 or something like that. Um, I remember that, you know, when I finished my PhD, I applied to 200 places and I got only three um, interviews. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's a, that's a reason you need to spend some time, go over their website and see that who is working on what. 
I mean, you can keep sending it, keep sending it, but if there is nobody working in that area, then uh, you know nobody is going to uh, not inclined to see your application. So you need to also you know invest your time looking through that, and then from there you figure it out. These are the ten places or twenty places I'm going to send my application. It is, it is, it is time consuming. I mean, yeah, who knows, you know, that you may not spend any time, you may be lucky if you send five of those and you get two, uh, two acceptance, okay. So, uh, but you know, if you want to, uh, you feel that, you know, that whatever money or time you have is spent in completing those application and, and and submitting your uh, application fee, then I think it's a good idea to spend some time, go over that, find out about the department, who is doing what, and so on. You, I mean, you are, yes, I have heard about that, but you know, it's a very generic for them. They do not know. That's what they do it. So they will, you know, put some flashy word in the letter, and and if you do not know the subject, then if people say, well, hey, the guy is saying something that we don't have expertise. Okay, so only you, having knowledge about that area, you can write the better letter than than uh, those are. Anyone else? Huh? Oh, my email ID, yes. Okay. Um, let's see if I had some cards over here. 